From the final kilometer of the final stage of the 2019 Tour de France, welcome, welcome to, to the, the GCN, GCN Show. <laughs> Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by Wiggle. Coming up this week, how to cure the post-tour blues. We've got five tips on how you can fill your now empty days. It's not quite over for the tour though. We still have some little tour nuggets for you. Plus, GCN inspiration, hack or bodge, and Roman Bardet's cycling shorts. Oh. It was a record-breaking Tour de France this year. We saw the first ever Colombian winner, a much-deserved and brilliant victory by Egan Bernal, who incidentally is also the youngest winner at 22 years old uh, since Francois Faber in 1909. Yeah, so young is Bernal, in fact, that he is the first Tour de France winner who started racing after the launch of GCN, a seminal moment for us as well. And we are actually still waiting on confirmation that uh, the now legendary 2014 Race Smart series was actually a pivotal moment in young Egan's career. Without a doubt. Well, that's it. It's kind of going to be confirmation of something we already know to be it's rhetorical question. true. Rhetorical yeah, question. basically. Um, also record-breaking for Peter Sagan with his seventh green jersey title, although it was kind of a bit overshadowed by the uh, GC battle. It was, wasn't it? Poor old Pete. What an amazing achievement. But no, all eyes were on that GC battle. Unpredictable to the very last. Even Mother Nature threw her hat into the ring with the adverse weather conditions and the landslides in that final week of racing. Yeah, but if you were unlucky enough to not catch the full three weeks of racing, then don't worry, because Team Somewhere rider Chad Hager summed it up perfectly with this tweet. Tour de France. Team accustomed to dominating did not, but won anyway, although not with the guy they expected and not for the first time. Well, hard to argue with that, isn't it? Pretty much nailed it in one tweet. Uh, the fact is though, if you are anything like us, you are probably suffering a little bit now from, from those post-tour blues. Yeah, for the last three weeks, your daily routine has been breakfast, watch the tour, lunch, watch the tour, dinner, watch the tour highlights, watch the tour analysis, read about the tour, bed. But now that's over, your life is devoid of meaning. It lacks purpose. What do you do? Well, yeah, fear not, because we have worked hard in coming up with five things that you can now do post Tour de France. First up, watch other bike races. Many people love the tour and tune in in July, but don't necessarily realize that there's a whole calendar of pro bike racing and other amazing races that you can watch throughout the year. Yeah, coming up very soon indeed is the Classica San Sebastian, one of the most underrated races on the calendar. 228 kilometers long, one day contested in the very punchy, difficult hills of the Basque Country. Yeah, it's such a good race. In the last five years, it's been won by Alaphilippe. Who? Uh, he's the mustachioed French dude who spent 14 days in yellow at this year's tour. Yes, I thought I recognised the name. Yep. Yeah. Mikhail Kwiatkowski, Balka Malema, Adam Yates, Alejandro Valverde. I mean... Yeah, what a yeah. race. Also, not long after that, we've got our third and final Grand Tour of the year, the Vuelta a España. And let's face it, in recent years, that's been every bit as good as the Tour de France. I cannot Sometimes wait for better. that. it's been better. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also coming up, we have the Ladies Tour of Norway on the horizon as well, just after that. And then the World Championships, which this year is in Yorkshire. That's probably gonna be the best race of the year because it's in Yorkshire. Where are you from again, Oli? Yorkshire. Let's also not forget that watching cycling is about way more than just road racing. I mean, the Transcontinental is on at the moment. That sees 253 riders racing from Bulgaria to Brittany, unsupported, all 4,000 kilometers of it. Yeah, but when we say watch, we mean watch dots on a map. Yes. But it is strangely captivating, and to be honest, it's right up there with a flat 200 kilometer sprint stage in the Tour de France. Indeed. Yeah, and if you enjoyed Hank's 1903 Tour de France stage video, it's awesome if you haven't yet watched it. Um, 
Well, it's the Transcontinental's in a similar vein to that as well. Yeah, although with modern bikes and with luggage. Just uh, as many moustaches though, more moustaches. Yeah, the moustache ratio is right up there, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? The pre-race favourite Bjorn Leonard has unfortunately had to pull out already after a nasty wasp sting and saddle sore issues. It may or may not have been linked slightly to the fact that he rode 760 kilometres in the first 33 hours of the event, which seems like a brisk pace to start at, doesn't it? Uh, certainly when you take into account the Eastern European heat and terrain, there's been a lot of gravel. Number two, go for a bike ride. I mean, actually go and ride your bike. Be inspired by the exploits of the super talented, super fit athletes that you've just been watching for the last three weeks. And go do it yourself. Yeah, you could enter an event as well, and it's a great time to enter an event. And there's loads of awesome things to choose from, from sportives, grand fondos, to local races and criteriums. And there's still some brilliant grand fondos to come this year. So, well, you're doing the RBC Grand Fondo Whistler oh, in September. Indeed. Still places available, so you could sign up and kick size head in there. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely <laughs> could. Uh, also, uh, GCN event in Solbach at the end of August, still one or two places available there. If you fancy a last minute break, that would be something good to inspire you for the end of August. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And if you're thinking of, well, doing your first ever race, then, well, we recently published a video where Fraser from GTN did exactly that. It's a brilliant one, uh, so you can see how he got on, and we'll link to it at the end of the show. You know, I was so inspired by the Tour de France this year that I actually had to miss the final stage because I needed to ride my bike instead. Yep, yeah, had, to, had to watch the highlights instead. No bad thing. GCN Racing. Number three, keep tour fever alive by making your commute just like the race. Start and finish it by warming up and cooling down on a turbo trainer. And then during the ride itself, why not get your friends to come along and run alongside you wearing only mankinis and giving you a little push. Yeah, and race every other cyclist on your way to work. Chase them down and use town signs like they're intermediate sprint points. And then when you get to work, eat a lunch that consists of rice cakes and gels out of a musette while sat at your desk. Yeah. Now, you may decide that your commute that day didn't go well. And if that's the case, you should refuse to talk to any of your colleagues and instead retire quickly to your team bus slash desk. Morning, Si. How's the ride? Yeah, and if it did go well, then celebrate by painting your bike and all of your possessions yellow. Number four, shave, change your pants, have a wash, tidy up your house, do the dishes and mow the lawn, spend some time with your family and friends. Your commitment to the tour has been commendable, but now it's over, use this opportunity to catch up on the chores you've had to forgo. Now, if all else fails, you could just start thinking about, well, next year's Tour de France, because the start is less than 11 months away. Yeah, well, you can you plan a trip to France next July so that you can spectate some of the stages for real and, uh, well, ride up some of the spectacular and punishing climbs that the race will go up. Yeah, why not hire a camper van? Or RV, if you're American. Yeah, that too. I mean, you could, you could spend the next year thinking about the outfit you're gonna wear for spectating. What would be the optimum mankini to help support egg and burnout? Maybe you're more of a morph suit kind of person for that added anonymity. Got plenty of time to come up with the optimum outfit, but oh, yeah. who do you think's gonna win? Bernal, Thomas, Froome, or Carapaz? Yeah, when you think about it, Will any team other than Ineos bother to take to the start? Because with that kind of lineup, that, that, that's pretty punchy. Probably, probably not. But, well, in all seriousness, though, Jumbo Visma 
they could be in a similar boat. If the rumours about them signing Tom de Moulin are true, they could turn up with de Moulin, Kreuzweig, Roglic and Bennett, all on the same team, potentially winners. Yeah, supported by Wout van Aert, Mike Turnison, Tony Martin and just with Dylan Groenewegen thrown in there for added stage winning potential. They could win every stage. Well, two horse race <laughs> next year. Can I just say though, at this point, how much I love Julian Alaphilippe, who said his main concern now with 2020 is how he's going to win the Tour of Flanders. How cool is that? He's going to do for the Tour de France what Peter Sagan has done for cycling in general. It's brilliant. I can't wait. It's now time for our weekly inspiration where you submit inspirational cycling photos for your chance to win either 50, 75, or 100 pounds in vouchers from our friends at Wiggle. Yeah, starting off, we have this one from Thomas, rounding out the podium with a solid third place. And I'll be honest with you, there's an embarrassment of riches when you look through GCN Inspiration photos. It genuinely, it, we could take days over this, it's so cool. Uh, anyway, Thomas sent this one in from the Oregon coast. He said, this is four and a half thousand miles in with 300 miles to go, but tonight this is home. And what a place to pitch up camp. If I'm not mistaken, that's also the location from the end of the Goonies, Ollie. Yeah, well, one of my favourites. Yeah, there we go then. Looks like a cracking place camp. They didn't, they didn't go bike packing in the Goonies, did they? But yeah, that, that, but they should have done. They should have done, shouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. uh, next up, we've got Walter, uh, and this is taken in New York, and he says his last ride in New York before coming back to Italy, and. Uh, that's a good a good spot to go and drop your bike, isn't it, for a photo? That does look super cool, doesn't it? Yeah, Definitely nice. makes you want to ride your push I like the it? perspective of the bridge. Yeah. It's cool. Nice. Right, so in first place, the winner of a hundred pounds of wiggle vouchers is Matthew from Holton, Ontario in Canada. And I love this photo, it's so cool. He said, uh, having two children at home, it's difficult to find time to ride. So if I want to do an epic 100Ks on the weekend, I need to start at 5 a.m. so I can be home in time to get the kids up. I've learned this is now my favorite time to ride as there's no traffic, the temperature is cool, and if the, sunri oh, the sun rises are beyond epic. That does look amazing. It also looks like, Matthew, like you've got a friend riding with you at 5am as well. Otherwise, that's an epic selfie. Uh, <laughs> but still, that, that, that's a beautiful shot, isn't it? Yeah, I love that mist just coming up over the fields yeah. first thing in the morning and the dawn. Super nice. cool. A well-deserved winner. If you want to take part in GCN Inspiration next week, then send your images to the GCN Uploader. And you can also use the hashtag on Instagram as well, GCN Inspiration. It's now time for cycling shorts. We'll start cycling shorts this week with an update on the penny farthing Land's End John O'Groats record that Mark Beaumont told us about last week. Yeah, that's right. Richard Thode has now set an unofficial new world record covering the 800 and something miles in a time of four days, 11 hours, and 52 minutes. He said he got up every morning at 6 a.m. and finished at 10 p.m., brackets approximately, every single day to do it. Isn't that bonkers? One for Hank, you reckon? Absolutely, watch this space. Yeah, some random news from the States this week as well, uh, which we got from nj.com, True New Jersey. Now, apparently the Carteret Police Department have purchased five new e-bikes that can go 50 miles per hour. I love this. I mean, completely illegal e-bikes, <laughs> perfect, for fighting crime. Crime Genius. is a turd that needs cleaning up, Si. Yes, it is, Ollie. Yes, it is. Now, the tour is full of highs and lows, and one particular low this year was the unfortunate crash of Wout van Aert, cyclocross star and first time rider at the Tour de France. Um, he tweeted this. Monday morning after the tour, not in a hotel in Paris, but in the hospital of Herentals. Lucky the end is near. My leg muscles are healing slow but steady and I may go home soon, fingers crossed. It's about time to thank everyone that helped and supported me. Yeah, poor guy, that is a bitter pill to swallow, isn't it? Especially after such an amazing start to the race. And like we said, highs and lows. On the flip side, you got egg and burnout. It was all good for him, even down to that swanky new uh, Pinarello F12 he received on the final stage. Painted bright yellow, just as if he was commuting to work. Successfully. Yes, successfully commuting to work. Yeah. yeah. Spare a thought 
for uh, Roman Bardet. Not only did he suffer a subpar performance at this year's tour, he also had to wear this for the final stage. Oh, good grief. Oh, that's awful. Oh, poor guy. The ignominy. I mean, that's just, yeah. What an insult. And then you will be pleased to hear, actually, that he did then swap to his team issue brown shorts uh, for the final podium celebration on the Champs-Élysées. Yeah, stay, stay classy, AG2R. That's right. It was actually great to see Bardet pick up the, uh, the mountains classification, wasn't it? Because he is a good guy and that was something to keep his head held high, which, uh, so yeah, I'm really pleased with the outcome. Yeah, it's just a shame he didn't get the same treatment as his teammate Oliver Narsen, who got to ride this absolute weapon on the final stage. Yeah, check that out. That is a new project from their team sponsor, Eddie Merckx. Apparently they've got three new steel bikes they're releasing and a made-to-measure program called My Corsa. There will be a little bit more information on that in the tech show this week, I believe. Uh, now, finally, at this point in the show, we would probably normally um, give up re results for the Tour de France predictions, but um, given that <clears throat> Lloydy actually got it right this year, and he's not here, we thought we'd just leave it there. Oh, why not? Why, why though? What do you mean, why? Because we don't well, want Lloydy to be right. Yeah, but I said Geraint, I got, so I'll take second place. All right, here's the rest. Alejandro Valverde. Jakob Fuglsang. Geraint Thomas. Adam Yates. Nibbly. Egan Bernal. Right then, it is giveaway time now. First of all, we have the results from last week's amazing competition where we offered you two tickets to the RBC Grand Fondo in Whistler with return flights to and from Vancouver, all sorts of amazing VIP things, including a helijet ride from Whistler back to Vancouver. Sounds amazing. It is. Should we do a drum roll for the winner? It is Laura Young from the US of A. So there we go, congratulations Laura. I don't know who you're gonna be taking, but I should imagine we will be inundated with friends looking to accompany you on that trip. Yeah, we also um, had a couple of videos about Whoop on the channel last week, and in conjunction with that, we're giving away five Whoops plus a 24 month subscription for each one of them. To enter and be in the chance to win, simply well, follow the link in the description below. Yeah, so if you haven't seen those videos yet, a quick recap, Whoop is like a system that allows you to quantify how recovered you are by measuring things like your heart rate, heart rate variability, your sleep. It's a pretty amazing bit of tech, so definitely check out those videos as well after this one. I have just made it back from France where I got the opportunity to ride up the Champs Elysees ahead of the Tour de France. But I wasn't there for just that. I was checking out some new tech from Oakley. Well, I say new, they launched in April, but they're hitting the shops now. These are the new Prism Road Black Edition lenses, new to Oakley's Prism range. Prism being the name given to the technology that alters the light that passes through the lens, which enhances the colors, increases contrast relevant to the specific applications. Oakley claims that this increases the depth of perception, but also enables you to see details in the road that you wouldn't have normally seen otherwise. The Prism lens technology is available across the entire range from for mountain bikers, for roadies, for golfers, but also the Prism lens technology is in their ski goggles. These ones are specifically designed for the roadies though. It enables you to see details in the road, see different textures, maybe even spot hazards like potholes or even cracks in the road. But to be honest, I think they look really cool. What do you guys think? A quick shout out to the GCN shop. We've got our summer sale now on, up to 60% off some items. That's right, from cycling kit to casual clothing to accessories, we got 25% off the country range of t-shirts. We've got up to 40% off selected sweatshirts. And then we've also got up to 15% off GCN cycling jerseys as well. Yeah, when it's gone, it's gone. Hurry to avoid disappointment. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. We're going to start with this from Lino Chebe. Uh, if you don't want to get your bike stolen, in Berlin, we use camouflage. And I'm glad you said actually there was a bike in this photo because I had hardly been able to see it. 
Well, it had to look twice. Well, I, f I, f I would say you shouldn't leave it there. <laughs> you don't want it to get. That's great. Stolen. That is really great. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, camouflage is a hack, but that camouflage is not optimum for that setting. I think we have to agree on. Uh, no, I take your point. Still, uh, I'm, I'm saying hack. That, it does look like a hack. Unlike yeah. this one, sent in by Cornelius James. He, in fact, he's even said hack or dodge. Uh, and dodge would be right. That looks like a top tube fixed with electrical tape. Uh, much like the handlebar grips and also the way the front light has been attached. Uh, that uh, is... But well, it, it looks like there's been some sort of brazing going on as well. I think the technical term for that is death trap. Definitely a bodge, uh, although not as bad as this one. What do you think? Would you rather descend uh, the angler route on that top first one we just saw or this one? Probably this one, cars. actually. He's sent in by Sebastian Mayer. I dug this one out of <laughs> the archives because, uh, yeah, a top tube fixed by cable ties. I'll I tell you why. It's not because I trust cable ties any more than electrical tape, yep. but I would rather ride a bike with the top tube broken in that location compared to the head tube. I'd rather it was like my seat and back wheel that fell off than my f the front <laughs> end fell off. It's basically like a, you know, if you're choosing which way you're going to crash, I think I'd go that one. Okay. Yeah? Right. Well, fair fair point, mate. I mean, well, don't, don't get me wrong, mate. I wouldn't want to ride either of them, but you know, just to if be you're clear, making it... just to be crystal clear, that's a bodge. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, we're not advocating <laughs> fixing frame failures with zip ties here. Uh, next up, we got. Well, this looks like a pretty good one, actually. Um, Keown in Stourbridge in the in the, in the West Midlands has. Um, that's in the United Kingdom for yeah. He's, well, he's he's made a bike stand from a pallet, a bit of. Well, he's reclaimed it. I like that. I like it very much indeed. It's neat, isn't it? He's put it as, it's nicely done. Neat, sturdy, and it looks bespoke for that particular width of tire. Nothing, there's nothing worse than a baggy bike stand. That one looks like it's gonna hold it up very nicely indeed. So yeah, I think that's a hack. Yeah, from me. good. Uh, and then this one, Stephen Blofeld. Do you reckon he's a Bond villain? I don't know, if he was, he probably wouldn't let us know. Uh, yeah. But anyway. Well, he's uh, he's got his phone mounted to his to his bike, so then he's got a USB power pack that he's hacked onto there. I've just I've, well, I've just called it already. I'm, I've just said it. I've said well, it's I mean, you said hack. That's a bold shout for effectively a power pack. That, was, sub, that was subconscious. And I just, just zip tied to a stem. It. it does look neat, to be fair. I mean, I'm, I'm not an advocate of a zip tie for anything, whether that be fixing your top tube or attaching a power pack. Uh, but that does look pretty neat. Yeah. Dare I say it, in that instance, I'd probably go for a top tube bag. I don't know, that's controversial in these parts, but you know, that seems tailor-made. Hanging around with triathletes too much recently, I think. That is a good point, actually. Yeah, <laughs> on that bombshell, uh, that brings us to the end of Hackle Bodge for this week. If you would like to submit photos, remember the uploader is the perfect spot. Otherwise, the hashtag GCN Hack on Twitter or Instagram, and we'll pick out the best ones each and every week. Caption competition time. And last week we had this picture of world champion Alejandro Valverde struggling in the rain at the tour. And uh, well, the winning caption that we've chosen is from Del P1974, who said, Oh my God, I forgot Nairo. I think it's good. Yeah, you get it? Yeah, reference to uh, Mobistar's what? Questionable tactics. Yeah, I mean, they knew like... what they were doing. <laughs> Six times Tour de France team champions, packing out the top ten. Yeah, yeah. But there we go. Anyway, congratulations, well, Delpy, nineteen seventy four. You get yourself a GCN Camelback water bottle. Oh yes. And if you would like to try and win one of these this week, then you just have to caption this photo. Yes, which is of Roman Bardet and Oliver Nason at the on the final stage of this year's Tour de France. And, uh, well, have you got any got any ideas? I have, mate. I have been thinking about this for a while. Yeah. I knew I'd have to step up to the plate today. Yeah. Oliver Nason has a huge grin on his face because he realises that in this particular cosplay, he gets to be Super Ted. <laughs> That's quite good for you. Thanks, mate. Yeah. I mean, only people who were born in the 80s and grew up in the United Kingdom will get it, but yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. No, I mean, that's all right. I've got to start somewhere, haven't yeah. I? You know, yeah. find, you know, globally recognised captions will come just as long as I get my own particular niche. Sort well, of if first, you think but... you can do better, caption below.
I think they might be able to do better. It's Training Corner now on the GCN Show, that part where we get to answer your training questions. The one that we choose to answer this week gets a three-month free subscription to Zwift, and they also don't have to put up with us answering it. It is, of course, one of Zwift's top coaches. Now, the question was from Robert Cowling, who said he's recovering from surgery. He didn't know how to adjust his FTP. Um, so he said he's dropped it from 233 to 209, but should he go through another ramp test now, uh, or can he save the pain by adjusting the FTP with a formula that takes into account how much time he's had off the bike? Thanks for your question, Robert. I mean, the good news is that if you had a good level of fitness before your time off the bike, then generally it's not that hard, or it's not as hard to get back to that same level you were at. But unfortunately, there is no one size all uh, when it comes to this because well, different people respond differently to different, well, training and getting back, so. Yeah, so Zwift has said, you've done absolutely the right thing by lowering your FTP a little bit. They recommend that you don't move it for a couple of weeks, so you keep training at that lighter FTP, even if it feels a little bit easier, and then, then you do your Zwift ramp test again, and then they recommend doing it again just four weeks later because the theory goes that you probably will start to improve far more quickly to get back to your level uh, rather than trying to get break new ground with your fitness. Yeah, and the key thing is to try and be consistent with your training as well, as that way your fitness will come back much quicker. If you would like to get yourself a three months free subscription to Zwift, plus of course get your training question answered right here on GCN, then all you gotta do is submit it using the hashtag AskGCNTraining. Simple as that. Yeah, and good luck with your recovery, Robert. As well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right now, as ever, there have been some amazing comments under our videos from the past seven days. We're going to pick out a few highlights. Many actually came from last week's GCN show. <laughs> Quite a few about the speeds of sea creatures. Now, I say sea creatures because because they're not all fish, Ollie. Um, Ollie Cook uh, said a whale is a mammal, not a fish. And uh, he's I not mean, wrong. He's not wrong. And uh, to be fair, I did know that. I'm I'm quite upset that it I accidentally called well, it a fish. Well, you know now. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, true. Leonard W also wading in on the topic. <laughs> he said the fastest ocean animal is not a sailfish, but a black marlin, a 132 kilometers per hour. That is seriously fast. I mean, seriously, seriously fast. It makes makes an octopus look pretty pedestrian now. And there was me getting all excited about 24.9 miles that's an hour. That's quicker than I've ever been going downhill on a bike. That's pretty much faster than I've ever driven in a car on yeah. it. And it's a fish. At least I hope it's a fish. It might be, it might be a small mammal, I don't <laughs> know. Uh, anyway, uh, next up, we've got this from Lucia Kamei. This is a reference to uh, a, an entry for Hack or Bodge last week. She said, I knew it, I told Martin it was a bodge, and oh, how I love being right. Cheers, Martin's wife. So uh, there we go. Martin, we did tell you it was a bodge, and yeah, Lucia says it's a bodge too. I mean, yeah, it's terrible. Can you sort it out, please? It was a bodge. It was, it was a bodge. Uh, David Brand commenting under the ketone section on last week's GCN show saying, slightly concerned that Ollie knows what grandma's pants taste like. <laughs> Grandma's pants. Uh, uh, no comment. We're all concerned, David. Uh, those of us that know Ollie uh, are concerned, but not surprised. But uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, and then lastly, uh, if you haven't seen Jeremy's uh, presenter video that uh, was released on the channel on Friday, check it out. Uh, Harbeer Soey uh, said, Simon, Dan, Oliver, and others. Oh yes. Uh, be afraid, be very afraid. j Power is in the town. This is the coolest UZM presenter video by far. And yes, it is. Not least because he's actually winning races and a lot of them as well. To be fair, Harby is not wrong, but I'm just glad that I'm not bulked into others and I actually get mentioned by name. Yeah, it's a relief, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, if you haven't seen Jeremy's video there, do make sure you check it out. So what's coming up on the channel this week? Well, on Wednesday, we've got how to carry your calories. On Thursday, we've got 10 things to leave 
just to the pros. And on Friday, what to look for in a gravel bike. Yeah, Saturday, we've got another medical video. This time, Chris Opie checks out how to ride with asthma, something that he suffers from. Uh, then on Sunday, we've talked about it already in this week's show, Ollie's first ever gravel race. 200 kilometers of gravel, active volcanoes, rain, river crossings, and just general hipster gnarl. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then Monday, uh, it's just conventional racing. It's the GCN Racing News Show. And Tuesday, it is, of course, the GCN Show. Well, we are getting towards the end of the show now, but as ever, we still have time for Extreme Corner. This week, it comes from Belgium, and it is Sam Reynolds at Loose Fest. Oh my word, this is utterly bomb. Check this out. That is mind blowing, isn't it? The size of those gaps. Yeah. And incredible. he makes it look easy. It was a good job that you clarified that with Sam Reynolds at Loose Fest, because a lot of the viewers probably would have assumed that it was me at the Rift Gravel race. One does not simply walk into Mordor, one rides a bike, apparently. Wow, yeah. No, I mean, there is a risk that people could have got quite confused there. Some real parallels between between the two. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's just as well. Uh, anyway, remember, of course, uh, Ollie's video uh, from the Rift Gravel Race will be coming up this weekend. So off the back of that, <laughs> you, you probably won't be able to wait until Sunday. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to watch a video that is already up on GCN, do make sure you check out how to do your first bike race. So uh, Fraser from the Global Triathlon Network very bravely and gamely took on his first ever bike race and absolutely nailed it, didn't he? So make sure you check that one out. It's just down there.